flight comp here and today I'm really excited because I have a brand new model to share with you that's um, brand new to the US and pretty much to the world. Uh, it's a F5J model from uh, the guys over at Vortex Soaring um, in Europe and um, to me it really is the next step in F5J models in terms of design and, and construction and it's like Christmas in June basically because I'm so excited to uh, get my hands on these things. Um, I was actually following the development of the model for a while uh, on some internet forums and when Dennis uh, emailed me and asked me if I'd like to, to sell them in the US I was, I was super excited and it's, a, it's an awesome op opportunity for me and for Flight Comp. Um, anyway, the model is called the Ultima as you can see right there and it is a four meter wingspan F5J model that's supposed to have a flying weight of under 40 ounces um, they, they list on their website that uh, you can get a flying weight of, of about 37 ounces um, so that is that is insanely uh, low weight and um, I was a little skeptical about how durable the plane might be because you know before I got my hands on one but now we have one here and we can check it out together and, and see if it's uh, super fragile or durable or and uh, all the details about the model so the thing that makes this airplane really uh, unique to me and, and uh, it makes it truly uh, the next step in um, construction for F5J models is is that it's 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 the first model I've seen that basically takes F3K or hand launch technology and applies it directly to a larger model um, in all aspects, not just the tail. Um, we've seen machine uh, solid core machine foam tails for a while now, but the entire wing is a uh, solid core foam that's machined and then sandwiched in between the molds when when the uh, the wings are laid up and that just produces a fairly stiff wing that is incredibly light and um, we'll go over some of the parts here and we'll give you a closer look but uh, in general we can start with uh, a wing the wing tip here's a wing tip and it's uh, solid core foam uh, spread toe carbon skins, um, super light, and uh, I think it has like a G10 machined uh, rib on the end, and it's got uh, tape uh, gap seals, obviously for weight. Um, aileron bay cut out. There is a spar in here. Um, looks like it's some maybe balsa and carbon. Um, the wiring for the for your servos is already installed and it comes like that um, You sort of have to fish out this end at the root and then the servo end is in the bay Pretty narrow wing tips As you can see Let's go to the center panel Center panel looks like a standard center panel you see on a uh, you know f3j or other f5j models um, the interesting thing is it's got a fairly thin airfoil but maybe not as thin as I would have expected to see on a model this light. Um, again it looks like it has fiberglass G10 machined uh, ribs uh, or root ribs, um, tape gap seals, two bolts to hold it down, a recess here for a DB9 connector and again uh, the wiring is already pre-installed here for the flap servos and uh, out to the um, uh, root rib for the aileron for the wing tips. The other nice feature is that the slots for the uh, control rods are already cut into the wings, the center panel and the tips, so you don't have to do any guesswork of cutting the channels for the uh, control rods, which on some DLGs you have to actually you know dig out that channel and it can be a little difficult so that's nice you do have to install the control horns which are fiberglass um, G10 control horns the other interesting thing too 
is instead of your typical threaded, you know, linkage with um, clevises for your um, servos and surfaces, they just give you solid stainless steel rod and they want you to just make L bends um, in all the control, uh, in all the servos and at the uh, horns on the control surfaces just like you would on a DLG. So that can, that can be really tricky to set up because you, you don't have the luxury of screwing in clevises and getting your lengths just right. Um, but it, w it should provide for a very light and stiff setup. So there's a center panel. The fuselage is really nice. Um, the finish on it is spectacular. It's um, made with a bladder that's blown up like, like most fuselages these days. Has uh, aluminum inserts here for the wing bolts and sort of a pylon mounted tail and um, receptacle here for the rudder or the vertical. Push rod for the uh, rudder is already installed and it doesn't go to the nose, it only goes to the pylon because in the pylon there's actually some bell cranks um, that drive the surfaces and from the bell crank to the nose you have uh, pull pull wires which I don't know if you can see but they're taped to the top of the fuselage. Again, all in an effort to reduce as much weight as possible. It looks like a really nice uh, setup, a nice system. And I think they have the system down because they, they've used similar things in uh, the, the original Vortex uh, DLG that they manufactured. So it's just really cool. I mean, this is a really great looking model. Um, sort of has that standard droopy nose um, that you see on most F3J and F5J models. Fuselage. They say they, these weigh about 130 to 140 grams, and it, it is extremely light. But it, it's not—it's not super fragile. The boom is is pretty stiff. Um, the nose feels good. So I wouldn't consider the fuselage super fragile, but it's definitely not not something you're gonna have, you're gonna want to dork on landings. Um, but for an F5J model, I, I don't think the fuselage would be overly fragile. So that's cool. The tails are really nice. This is the elevator, again, solid core, uh, I think Rosell uh, machined foam. Um, some kind of like carboline carbon skins. Um, one bolt to hold down the uh, elevator, it looks like. Let me just confirm. Yeah, it looks like just one bolt. Again, to keep things light. And it has some alignment pins, which you don't really see. So that's a unique feature. Control horns pre-installed on the elevator. And that goes to the bell crank and that little pylon on the, on the boom and the fuselage. Um, tape gap seals. Quality on the elevator is really nice. Um, if you're familiar with any modern F3K or DLG model, then you, were, you will be uh, familiar with the way that the, the finish and the um, construction methods on this Ultima uh, are so you know if you're wondering what will the Ultima be like and you have a, a modern solid core DLG at home it's gonna be like that if you're wondering as far as stiffnesses and uh, wing skins so there's the elevator now the rudder is big fairly big uh, rudder on the vertical um, carbon dowel to jig into the fuselage and that has some threads in it so when it attaches to the fuselage you just run um, a bolt underneath to attach the rudder and there's an L bend on the push rod so very easy to remove this for transportation now another really interesting feature about this rudder is that it's center hinged which is very unique because mostly you'll see a rudder just hinged on one side but this is center hinged and it has gap seal on both sides of the rudder so another uh, unique feature um, they give you two sets of joiners with a couple degree difference in the dihedral angles so you can have a flatter wing or more, or more dihedral you know for a 
Maybe for thermaling, you can use the thermaling on a, a calm day. You can use the greater dihedral, and for a little more active air, you could use the flatter, flatter uh, joiners. And they give you some uh, accessories, control horns, servo covers. Uh, they give you a DB9 connector, the bolts for the wings and tails, and the stainless steel rods um, for your linkages on the wings. They give you and already install at the bell cranks the pull-pull cables for the fuselage, so that's really cool. Things they do not give you. There's no servo tray, servo system for the fuse. You have to completely make that yourself. And there's no ballast system, so you have to figure that out for yourself as well. There are some guys that are making a ballast system and a servo tray for this model, uh, I think in Holland. And um, they might be available for purchase. I'll put a link in the description um, if I find out more information about that. Okay, let's get up close and personal with some of the parts on the Ultima. I'll uh, zoom in the camera and give you some uh, detailed shots.